This video is the first in a series where I'm going to demonstrate some Git fundamentals in Android Studio. In this video, we're going to push our project initially, and then we're going to issue a few commits and a few pushes. Let's jump right in. I have a brand new Android Studio project here. I've not yet pushed it to GitHub. At this point, you might have already done so with your own project, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and hit share project on GitHub. I'm going to name my project MyPlantDiary32 because I'm targeting the 32 SDK version of Android Studio, and then I hit share. I'll go ahead and say initial commit and add. Now we see successfully shared project on GitHub. And sure enough, here's our MyPlantDiary32 project. Our focus is simply on Git commands in GitHub, so I'm going to do a few trivial changes here just so we can explore how Git commit and pushes work. So I go into my example unit test file, and I'll say add test. And this is Kotlin. Don't be too concerned if you're not comfortable with Kotlin just yet. Just know that we're making some changes. Nonetheless, in Kotlin, a function, we start with the word fun. So we'll say 3 plus 3 underscore equals... Six. So a trivial test, and if we run it, it sure should pass. And sure enough, we see that our one test has passed. So there are two ways that I can commit and push this to Git or GitHub. One way is through the terminal window. The other way is through the menu system in Android Studio. Let's start with the terminal. So I'm simply going to issue a git commit period command which says commit whatever we have. Now you notice it's prompting us to enter some kind of commit message, so I'm going to say add unit test for 3 plus 3 equals 6. Now choose escape to get us back to command mode, and then type in colon wq. And that effectively saves the message. And we see here two files changed, 11 insertions. I go back to our GitHub repository and refresh, and you notice that we still only have that initial commit because we have not actually pushed our changes yet. So let's go ahead and push our changes with git push dash u origin master. And remember what that means. We're pushing our local changes up to the remote called origin in the master branch, and I hit enter. It's prompting me now for a token, which I did a previous video where I show how to create that token, so I won't show that again here. I'll go ahead and choose sign in, and we see it puts some messages over here. Go back to our repository, refresh, and now we see that we have two commits, and we can see our commit that we just made for, for our new unit test, assert equals 6, 3 plus 3. By the way, I, I don't want to leave you hanging on that token. I, I don't want to go through the whole thing, but let me go ahead and just show you where to get your token. Uh, if you don't have one, so go to settings, and then developer settings, and then personal access token. You can generate a token here if you don't have that, and then you can throw that into uh, Android Studio so that it knows it can authenticate with GitHub. So that's how we can change things using the command line. Let's take a look at how we can change things simply by using the menu system, which effectively is doing those same commands under the cover for us. So I'll make a new test. We'll say add test, and then fun, three plus four equals seven. Open curly, close curly, and then no surprise here. Very simple test here. And once again, I'm sure I could run this and it would pass just like our last one did. Now, using the menu system, I right click on the app folder. I choose Git and then commit directory. We see that example unit test has changed. And this time, instead of typing in the terminal window, we're typing in this window here to say add unit test for 3 plus 4 equals 7, just like so. Now we can commit, which is going to keep it local, or we can commit and push, which is going to push it up to GitHub as well. So let's choose commit and push. Now you notice that we have master, and then there's an underline here for origin and another underline for master. Well, we're currently pushing the master branch. We're pushing it to the remote called origin, and we're pushing it to the branch called master on that remote called origin. So you notice that I can click on origin and I could define a new remote. And that's one of the benefits of distributed version control, is we can have multiple remotes where we can push these changes. I'll go ahead and choose push. We'll see a little status bar coming up over here. And then we see our confirmation pushed one commit to origin master. We navigate back to GitHub and we see that sure enough we have three commits now, including our most recent commit. 
So both of these things work the same way, either using the command window or the terminal window at the bottom, or using the menu system and using right click. It's really just a matter of what you prefer. While we're here, let me show you one more best practice. So far, we've assumed that we're the only one working on this project, so I've just been doing commits and pushes. But that's not necessarily a safe assumption. Keep in mind that others might be updating the project as well, and others might be updating that remote. If they update that remote and we do not pull that update in, there's a chance that we could end up with a conflict if we're working in the same file as them. So before doing any major changes, it's always a good idea to do a pull, and oftentimes a pull comes with an update, and that will grab any changes that have occurred on that remote and ensure that we're in sync with that, which will significantly reduce the chance of having a merge conflict. Guess what? It's very easy to do. We simply right-click again on our app folder, go to Git, and then go to Pull. And once again, we can choose what remote we want to pull from and what branch, and then we simply choose Pull. We watch the bar come here, and it says all files are up to date. So I always recommend doing that before you start any kind of change to your application, but it's a good idea to do periodically as well. Also, Try to work in a very object-oriented way where we have small classes and small methods. That will make it a little bit easier for different developers to, differ to work in different parts of the application instead of all developers working in the same class, which is essentially the same file, and possibly working within the same part of that file. If that happens, you're likely to have a merge conflict, which you can work around. It's just extra effort, and it's very easy to avoid simply by doing a poll before you do any major changes and periodically while you're doing those major changes. So this is a very simple look at how to do a commit and a push. In a future video, we're going to take a look at how to use branches and how to manage branches with our Android Studio IDE and with GitHub. So I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you.